Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to the Vulture, now in a more devilish red form. In today's episode, we have finally reached difficulty 20, and my word, was it a journey to get here. Now, sadly, my microphone wasn't working earlier, I needed to set some things up, because I changed the software, all the usual technical gubbins. However, I wasn't prepared for how much combat was on the way from level 10 to level 20. On level 19, I encountered over 20 opponents in a 20 minute time span. Now we've been here for one minute and so far, nothing is trying to shoot me, but because I couldn't help it, I did record half of the combat. So here's a little three minute or so teaser of what you sort of missed. But honestly, the difficulty has ramped up. It's still not quite as high as I would like, but some of the enemies which were fighting us were honestly terrifying. So I'll be right back after the little time lapsey montage -y fighty thing, which isn't a time lapse at all. It's just fighting.
I hope you enjoyed that, because already we are about to enter some combat, although it's not fighting us yet. So one thing I have learned is, wow, did I set up my detection system incorrectly. I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought, oh wow, Lathrix has learned something. No, Lathrix is an idiot. Lathrix should never trust Lathrix to do something which Lathrix has done. It never works out for the best. So pretty much, the detection system, I had all of this section over here wrong. Essentially, things which couldn't detect speed were giving me speed information. Needless to say, the turrets couldn't figure out what was where pretty much ever. Now, what is that enemy? It seems really small. Please, don't have the curse. Every time I go to record, are the enemies smaller again? What even is that? It looks like one of the Steel Striders going by the colour scheme. However, I have no idea what that is. Does it even have weaponry? So it has anti-missile lasers all over it. It has some missile systems, and that's pretty much that. It looks like a scouting vessel. Let's see if the turrets work better now. Oh look, they're hitting the target really accurately. It's almost like Lathrix has finally learned something. You have no idea how angry with myself I was when I figured out how badly I had done. Also, you may notice that those shells, way more effective than the old ones. So what I've done, because people keep asking me, Lathrix, how do you set up your shells? I will show you very briefly the shell setup I have at the moment, because I'm a big fan of smaller shells but more frequent shooting than larger shells with less frequent. Although you can go ridiculous, even with the larger gauge weaponry, I just prefer smaller gauge. So, if I can spread that love to everyone and everyone can use the more rapid fire weaponry then I will be very happy. I couldn't find this for like two minutes. There we are, that is the current shell I'm using, and yes, it is really that simple. It's all about armor piercing, nothing else. Expected armor pierce is 38.1, even though the kinetic damage isn't particularly powerful, it's only 1,219, it's a fairly fast shell, and ultimately, it's a good all-rounder shell. It does well against small enemies, it does well against large enemies, because it goes straight through armor. The one thing it doesn't do well is it doesn't destroy sections of a ship particularly well, and it's heavily countered by shields, because the faster the shell goes, the more counterable the shell is, because logic in from the depths, I suppose. Either way, this thing does very well against heavily armoured opponents because it goes through the armour and damages what's inside, although it tends to not destroy the armour it goes through because that's just how the shell is set up. If you would like a better version for some situations, I would recommend changing to some solid warheads or perhaps even changing the head because although this is fantastic, it does come with a lot of negatives. I would honestly normally go for the standard AP or perhaps this version, but there we are with that. I try to keep the technical talk to a minimum. So, let's find some more enemies in strength 20. If they're too weak, we'll go higher. If they're just about right, we'll stay here. Also, why am I losing resources? Do I have an ammo processor still online? One other weakness I did notice with the craft whilst I was fighting all of those enemies is our turrets are not suited for prolonged combat at all, and that's purely because we are going with only belt-fed loaders. So for those who don't know how the belt-fed loaders work, it simply means the loader itself is really effective, in fact incredibly more effective than a standard loader, however once the clip is empty it must enter a reload stage. When it's reloading a belt fed loader cannot feed shells into the barrel, which means the gun pretty much turns off. In addition to this, when you are firing, like I just said, you can't reload, which means eventually you will run out of ammo for your turret. A normal auto loader will constantly siphon ammunition from the the ship in order to keep on firing, even though once it runs out of its clips, normally that will be a lot slower, it will still continue to fire every time it reloads a shell. The big problem with this simply means if I'm in a very long fight, I think more than about two and a half minutes, the entire ship has no weaponry. Although the middle weaker gun seems to last a lot longer than the faster side guns, it's not very good, so I'm considering changing the turrets. However, the reason why I'm using the belt-fed loaders 
is because they are incredibly effective, as you can see. That's the reason why I'm being able to shoot so fast. By the looks of it, it's yet another very small enemy craft. And look! The shots are hitting even though the target is moving and we are incredibly far away. In fact, the shells are slowing down because of how far away the enemy is. Let's turn that off. There's no point in wasting ammo since some of them are missing purely because they're dropping out of the sky. And let's get nice and close, have a look at the enemy, and say hello to our turrets. Although it does seem like I am going to have to increase the difficulty even more. But hey, I'm having fun again, that's the thing. I am taking damage and having to assess situations. In fact, I've had to upgrade my craft for the first time in a long time in terms of upgrading the detection system because it wasn't good enough. And that makes me very happy indeed. Okay, turn back on. I said turn back on, thank you. Okay, going to stay at this view just because I want to make sure I'm dodging those shells. Those shells are terrifying. It's going for the back section a lot. I'm, I'm assuming that's where the resources are. Oh, it's changed to the front. Now it's the back again. What are you after? What is the AI going for? Either way, look at how many shells are being deflected. And like I say, shields are the ultimate counter to these weapons. Ooh, look at that. Wow, complete deflect! Not a single shell is getting through! How strong are those shields? Okay, we're moving! We are- No, we're not upping the difficulty! We just took three shells to the side, and I'm very happy to say that it hasn't seemed to done too much to my controls. But yeah, we're getting out of there. Our first loss! Shields just completely countered us. We need anti-shields, and the way to do that is to either make some of our shells have the EMP head, the one which actually affects shields rather than just standard, or we could go down the route of having EMP missiles or something like, like that which could counter the shields themselves. Either way, turn off the AI. How are we doing damage-wise? We have almost fully repaired, okay. So once again, heavy armor on this thing. There's now two enemies, okay. I've just come to the realization we are now acting like a true vulture. Upon finding an enemy which is healthy and can fight back, we are buggering off. Just no, <laughs> we are not going to fight this thing. Is that now fighting the other guy? I think it might be. Let's have a quick look, see what's going on over there then. We are now pretty much far enough it can't hit us. Nope, some of its shells are trying, but simply not in range. And that's the other one. What is that? Is that a flying... Is that my flying squirrel? Why are you trying to fight the flying squirrel when there's something else over there? You're never going to hit it. Time for a bit of a test while the enemy is being distracted from a fuse-laden cram cannon. So, we are now using high explosive rounds with an inertial fuse, which means if they get deflected by a shield, they will instantly detonate. So hopefully, all of these little explosions we're about to throw at the enemy will be enough to strip it of its outer weapons. I mean, that is a lot of explosions, so I can only hope. Now, the lag is being caused by the amount of enemies currently around us, so I am going to have to go through a portal soon just to reset that, because the lag is terrible. And there we go! Huge explosion on the back. The damage is definitely getting through. And I think what I've mainly showcased, along with my stammering today, is that having one type of cannon is a really bad idea. That's just it. It is a terrible idea, and right now we're lagging so much, there's so many enemies, I think it would be best if we just escaped as much as I do want to kill the opponent now we are dealing damage to it. I will decide very, very soon. I have no idea what my craft is currently aiming at, and I do apologize for the amount of lag currently happening. There is a grand total of 11 enemies in the area, so naturally all of their AIs and all of that loading is having a bit of a toll, so I really do think we are going to have to go through a portal as soon as this enemy is dead, which should be hopefully very, very soon. Now these shells are also really inaccurate, so once again, these aren't good shells, these are just a bit of a test, and... 
by the looks of things, a very successful one, as we rain down hell from above. There goes the main turret, again. I really don't want to put degraded mode back on, but I think I might have to, which of course is the lower quality version. Which means we can't see the shells, trails and everything, which means it'll be very hard to see what we're doing. So for this once, I'm going to sacrifice the lag and allow the lag to happen just to make sure I can see what we're doing. And there we go, a very powerful enemy indeed is felled, finally. Is it actually dead? Yep, two damage. That means we can get its resources if we get close enough, which of course I want to do as soon as possible. And the enemy flyer is now, well, it's under siege. And there goes the second enemy. We are victorious, even if it did take us quite a long time and a lot of flying around. So, what have we learned about ourselves? The belt-fed loaders, definitely not as good as I first thought, and we do have to rethink our future turrets. Uh, different types of weapon would be fantastic, having only one is a major weakness. And explosive shells, actually surprisingly good, even on the smaller scale. I was shying away from them, because honestly, they were pretty weak the last time I tested. And what type of enemy is that exactly? Let's have a quick look-see indeed, as soon as I find myself. Oh dear, this is one of the deep water guard vessels, and I'm assuming, and I am just assuming this, perhaps it's a bit low on engine power, because that has just completely plummeted from the sky. But saying that, surely the balloon should keep it in the air, so maybe it's just taken damage instead. Well, either way, let's see how good explosives are. Well, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. I was going to record a little bit longer. We are now in difficulty 23, but the lag is still occurring. I'm not sure what's causing it. I've turned off the game several times now. I've tweaked the settings, but I will be sure to fix it before the next episode. We can't have another episode with as much lag as what's happened in this one. It's just not playable. It's just not fun to watch. So I do apologize for the short episode. I will be sure to get the next one out a little bit earlier than usual to make up for it, and I really do hope you've enjoyed. I really have, even if the footage may be a little bit scattered, because a lot of it I will have to cut purely because of frame loss. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, there's a little bit of lag, and goodbye.